gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen to your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. For announcements this morning, our new minister will be here next Sunday, and it's a fellow by the name of Steve Douglas. That's me, Steve Douglas. And after the service next week, we'll have our potluck to welcome him and his family. Beginning the first Sunday in July, we'll be going back to our normal Sunday schedule. So it'll be 8:30 worship here in the sanctuary. 9.30 Sunday School, and at 10.30, of course, we'll have our worship service here in the sanctuary. Not sure if they got all the Sunday School teachers lined up and the nursery taken care of yet, um, but if you're interested in helping with that, if you'll contact Elaine Dean, maybe. In July, we'll be in charge of the People's Table. They are actually, this is the first time in like 18 months or however long it's been, they will actually be having people come into the fellowship hall at First Methodist Church instead of actually, you know, having it at the doorstep. Uh, if you're interested in helping with that, you'll see Betty Hill. I know we've got two or three lay speakers around, and I had gotten a email the other day. We've got some uh, lay speaking classes coming up if you're interested in the basic class. We've also got two advanced classes, one called Transforming Evangelism, and the other one is Dancing for Storytelling. The men's group is supposed to meet tomorrow evening at my time, six o'clock, I believe it is. Today, of course, is Father's Day. And one of my coworkers Way back a little over 11 years ago, you are giving me something that I'll read to you. It's called The Song for My Father. You give me hope and laughter, but these are not the best. A steady hand to guide me through sad times of distress. You watch out for my safety. You catch me when I fall. Direct angels to surround me with the greatest gift of all. But this I know, my father. In doubt, I search the stars to find that you're with me and not very far. Speaking comforting words in silence, be of good cheer, my little flower, for life is eternal. Birth is the opposite of death, and you'll be daddy's little girl forever and ever. Today, we also celebrate uh, our Gideons, and they've got a little display up here. And we'll be hearing more from them. Um, this time we'll look, the, are there any other announcements by any chance?
He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From many he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Scripture readings this morning should come from the electionary 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of their salvation. We're putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found within our ministry. But as servants of God, we have committed ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships and calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, Holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. In honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and seen we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possess everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is open wide for, to you. There is no restriction in our afflictions, but only in yours. In return, I speak to children. Open wide your hearts also. Our first hymn this morning is in the faith we sing. And we will sing the first and last verses the black hymnal in your uh, in the pew. Please stand if you are able. <laughs> Hey, 
anybody back in the back? <laughs> Going to mountain top. That's wonderful. Today we also think about churches around our conference. It's, um, it's that time of year. We have ministers that are retiring, new ministers that are coming in. And some folks are, are actually getting new ministers and some are going to other places. service members, and first responders, Isaac Norning, Chris Tucker, Jesse Owens, Anthony Dory, Daniel Westmoreland, Jason Cruz, Jerry Lovell, Jeff Lovell, Nick McCoy, Matt McCoy, Wayne Click, Tommy Henley, Jalen McCumber, Bradford Morton, Michaela Pierpoint, Matthew Hill, Healthcare workers, Cassandra Waters, Jessica Whitty, Kendall Hill Barra, Sarah Fitzgerald, Shelly Whitty, Kimberly Nace, Jennifer Leland, Jessica Bitworth, Lisa Donaldson, Mary Snee, Tyler Snee, Chelsea Leonard, Scott Waters, and Lynn Turner. And we have a person who's coming in. You have a joy this morning. What? Yes, a lot of break. <laughs> <laughs> you may get into the service. Hey, everybody, you can say. Hello, girl. Her name is Laura Danielle. She weighs 7 pounds and 10 ounces. I would like to keep, keep her in the prayer for now. Just have a little bit of confidence. I'm not sure. I may not be sick for it. By the mothers, and you know what that is. So she is at Wednesday right now. She said it last night, but with the growing the line. So hopefully they'll be coming today. I just torture me because Kate hey, hasn't posted any pictures. I can't post any pictures until she does. So. <laughs> <laughs> but she is a beautiful little girl. We're excited about the land. Guard our Creator, we give you thanks for those who have been fathers or mothers for us. Help us inherit from them that which will make us more fully your people. For they have offered us blessings of love, may we incorporate those gifts into our lives. For they have hurt us or fallen short of our expectations, may we learn from them that we might not repeat their mistakes. May the honor we convey toward our parents reflect the honor that we have felt toward you. We give you thanks for all the many blessings you have given us, for those mentioned and unmentioned, concerns for ourselves, family, friends, and nation. We ask for your help in this time with the COVID pandemic that it will soon be eradicated. We humbly ask for your guidance as we live each day and pray that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and we forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
second hymn this morning is going to be number 445 in your red hymnal. Happy the home when God is there. All verses. Please stand if you are able. Sandy Hook for the past few years. 
and he's a member of Christ Church, which is here in Columbia. Well, it's time to come up and share a little bit about the Gideons and Thank you, Don. It is a, indeed a pleasure to be with you today to give you an update of what's going on in the Gideon world with your help and support. Can a single copy of God's Word impact the world? We'll be right back in just a minute with the rest of that story, as Paul Harvey used to say. But let's talk just a minute about the Word. God speaking through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 55 and 11 had this to say about His Word. He said, So shall my Word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. As Gideons, we rest upon this promise, knowing that wherever we place the Word of God through the help of the local churches, that God will honor that word and will bring forth fruit from that word. All of you here today are probably familiar with the Gideons and who they are and what they do, but in case someone does not remember, I'll give you a brief update. Gideons are Christian business and professional men who believe this Bible to be the inspired word of God. They're also members in good standing of a local church or congregation such as Riverside United Methodist here today. We're not another denomination as many suppose, but we're basically an armor and outreach of every local church or congregation. Because of this joint effort of the churches and the Gideons, this is thought to be one of the largest missionary outreaches in the world. In 2019, we were placing the Word of God in 201 countries in 109 different languages at the rate of 1 million copies every 4.2 days. I usually don't give a lot of specific statistics, but I would like to give some today to bring the Gideon Report home to you here at Riverside Methodist. You see, the money that's given in the offerings in the churches that we receive goes first for local distribution to the hotels, nursing home, assisted living, hospitals, colleges, boutiques, schools where we're allowed to be in, EMTs, nurses, and the list goes on. But in the calendar year, 2019, and I might add 2020, with us was like the churches. We were basically shut down. Like my wife and I had a carload of Bibles headed for the hotels and nursing homes. We got to the door on the day that everything shut down and with a sign, uh, you cannot enter. We called a few of them, some of them let us leave the Bibles and they did they distributed them, but, uh, but we were basically shut down as you were. But at any rate, uh, in 2019, we gave out, the South Camp gave out over 2,100 copies of the Word of God in South Murray County and Lewis County. And this is besides what the North Camp gave out in the northern portion of the county. It also does not include the personal workers' testaments that we as Gideons and Auxiliary purchase ourselves and give out to those that we witness to or come in contact with. But uh, I'd like to give you a, just a little bit more on a local ministry. Uh, we, in September the 24th and 25th of 2019, 12 Gideon and Auxiliary from both the North and the South Camp were on the campus of Columbia State giving out the Little Green Testaments that we give to the college students. 
We're only allowed to reach probably 10% of the students. There's a green grassy area there in front of the gym. That's the only place they allow us or anyone else to set up to distribute material. So we probably reached less than 10% of the students, but we were able to reach 330 souls for Christ through giving the little testament to them that, so that as they read it, the Word of God can transform their lives. But looking back, some of these students that we gave this little green testament to were fifth graders in 2010 when we were shut out of the Murray County Schools due to the Murray County School Director's coercion of the attorney and board of directors to close the school distributions in Murray County with the excuse that the ACLU might sue them. This has never happened, but that was the logic for moving us out of the schools. But uh, the good news of this was that some of these fifth graders that, that could not get their little red testaments in 2010 on this particular day at the college uh, campus received their little green testament in place of the red one. But while on the campus there at Columbia State for this particular distribution, my wife was there and giving out the testaments to the different ones and she gave some out to a group of black students that were coming through for the next class. They went over and sat down outside of the building there, close to where Kathy was, had her table set up. But uh, it seems that one of these particular ones that had received their little college testament was a Christian, a real Christian, a witnessing Christian. You get the picture, I'm sure. But uh, she began very vocally to ask the surrounding students if they had accepted Christ as their Savior, to which some of them replied they had. And one particular lady told her that she did that as a kid because everybody else was doing it. To which this evangelistic young lady replied, well, honey, you better do it all over and do it for the right reason this time. One testament in the hand of a young Christian gave her the boldness to be a true Christian and urge her friends to get right with Christ. Kathy said it made her day to hear them discussing the Word of God after they had received their copy. Another young man there I, that I gave a testament to said he was a youth leader at his church in Spring Hill. I was able to talk with him about the life book that youth leaders and pastors can order through Gideon's International there in Nashville, and they can get as many as 2,000 that they can give to their students there in the church, and then they in turn can carry these to the school and share them with the classmates there in Murray County Schools, even though we as Gideons cannot get in. But, uh, I would like, I could probably tell you, let me just mention something about this life book. This contains the book of John in one of them, the newer version has the book of Mark. But this is geared toward the teenagers. It has a lot of great little twerks in it that uh, tend to lead to their way of thinking, but it's a great way of getting the Word of God into their hands so they can read it. In 1998 or so, Kathy and I were privileged to hear the testimony of David Kidwood in Kenya. We were at a pastor's banquet at Park City, Kentucky. Now, this uh, David Kidwood had received a little green testament. He received it from his teacher that came to the tribe to teach the students there. He didn't teach on this. It was far from it. See, his teacher was an atheist, but he had received a little green testament years ago when he was in college. He had kept that testament, and as they were packing the books up, 
to for the teacher to move on to another tribe. David Kimberly was there helping him pack his books. But David Kimberly uh, was there and the teacher pitched this little green book to him and said, I'll give you this book. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. Little did that atheist know the power that he had just placed in the hand of David Kimberly. Because you see, David Kimberly had been searching for the real God for his tribe and for the nation. But his grandmother who raised him was a witch doctor. And uh, he knew that that was not the true God. But David Kimberly, after he got the Little Green Book, he came to know the Jesus of the Little Green Book, as he called it. And he put the Jesus of the Little Green Book to the test against the fires of Satan and witchcraft that were in his tribe. God did a miraculous miracle there with, in that tribe that day. And over 20,000 souls accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior as Jesus proved himself more powerful than the witchcraft and Satan that they had been worshiping for years. Let's go back to the rest of the story that we told you about as we started. You know, the one I just told you about, David Kimwood, it was a dynamic testimony. Here's a testimony that's just as great. And God used a single copy of his word to impact the world. We're fixing to find out. It seems that in, I might add that this particular testimony is a Methodist testimony, if you would. But it seems that in 1987, on the campus of Oklahoma City University, Craig, a young Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity student, was on the collision course with God. He was also leading his fraternity on a collision course with society and with his university. We have about eight miracles that happen in the life of Craig. We'll go through these. Miracle number one, Craig decided to improve his image. He was about to be ousted from school, it appeared, with all the things he was doing. He decided to prove his Im improve his image, so he called a Bible study, and he headed across campus to his Bible study he had called. When he suddenly realized one thing, he did not have a Bible with him. He did not even own a Bible. But on that particular day, miracle number two happened. The Gideons were on the college testament giving out the Little Green College Testaments to the students. They placed one in, in Craig's hand and he rushed on to his call meeting, Bible study. God saw the big picture even then of his plans for this young rebellious leader. But through God's grace and mercy, miracle number three happened. As Craig was reading this Little Green Testament, he came to know Jesus and accepted him as his Lord and Savior. This scripture, he said that a verse of scripture that spoke to him was Ephesians 2, 89. He re realized that we're not saved by our works, but by grace. This particular verse said, but by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast. So that be what became of this rebellious young college student? Well, after graduation from Oklahoma City University, where he received a bachelor's degree in marketing, he met his wife Amy, and the two were married in 1991. That same year, miracle number four happened. Greg entered the ministry as associate pastor of Oklahoma City's First United Methodist Church. He attended Phillips Theological Seminary and under a master's degree of divinity. He was an associate pastor at First United Methodist Church on April the 19th, 1995, 
when the uh, Oklahoma City bombing took place. In fact, on that particular day, another miracle happened to Craig. Craig was not in Oklahoma City. He was away at a seminar studying for his pastor. And it's a good thing he was. The corner of the First Methodist Church where Craig's office was located was wiped out. The senior pastor and eight others were farther into the building. Other than a few scratches to one member of the church, no one there was hurt. But had Craig been there, it is evident he would have died because the corner where his office was was wiped out. Some members of the congregation were killed in other buildings from the blast. There were 324 buildings over a six block area that were damaged. The church building was later condemned and had to be raised, but during the immediate aftermath of the blast, the church was used to stack dead bodies and body parts for later identification. But Craig used his knowledge gained through his marketing degree and his wisdom gained through the divinity degree to discover how to reach the unchurched multitude. Miracle number six is still happening today. Greg Crochel is a 53-year-old senior pastor of Life Church, the Edmond, Oklahoma-based congregation that Craig started in a two-car garage in 1996. This progressive church is also spreading the gospel online at LifeChurch.tv, the live broadcast of its services, as well as recorded videos that can be viewed online throughout the world. Miracle number seven, the church today is the largest church in America with 33 campuses in 10 different states with over 100,000 weekly attendees. Perhaps most worthy of all is Craig's vision to spread the gospel. Through the Life Church TV and the UVerse Bible app, miracle number eight has taken place. They formed this media with uh, Craig and his Life Church media team. Today, a free copy of the scripture can be downloaded to electronic media in 1,958 translations in over 1,500 different languages, and it's available to people all over the world. As of 2020, the app has reached over 450 million free downloads, and without advertising other than word of mouth. They also have a Bible app for kids, and he said this was very actively used during the time that kids were held at home for COVID. But he said that he told the number of the downloads that it had reached, but it has different games and activities that are Bible oriented. But uh, I might add that you may have this phone on your own. I mean, your this uh, app on your own phone. This is a little brown Bible that comes from Apple uh, App Store, and uh, but it it has Holy Bible on that little brown Bible, and uh, it's very unique. They'll send you a Bible verse every day that you can read at the same time every day. In fact, if I had my phone, it'd be dinging about now. I get mine at ten thirty and eleven. But uh, it's great to see the Word of God coming to you and the people using it. Give you just a little bit of information. In 2020, as some churches temporarily paused physical services to stop the spread of COVID, many people used digital tools to connect with God, including the Uverse Bible app, with 43.6 billion Bible chapters read, 7.5 billion audio chapters played, and 1.4 billion Bible plan days completed. You see, one copy of God's Word given to one rebel student has made this change in the world today. 
So we ask the question, can a single copy of God's Word impact the world? We've answered that question. Yes, it can. With God's directive and through the power that's in His Word, all things are possible. We thank God for the Gideon that was faithful to go to the college that day and give out the little green testament. We are thankful for the donor who was faithful to contribute for that testament. And most of all, we're thankful and praise God for all he has chosen to do as a result of that single little green college testament that was placed there. Yes, the word of God would not return void, as Isaiah said a minute ago. You may ask, how can I help with the work of the Gideons? I'll give you four ways you can help this teamwork effort. You can help through your prayers. Pray that God will keep the doors open to the countries, to the hotels, the schools, and yes, that he will reopen Murray County schools for the Little Red Testament being passed. Second, if you're a business or professional man, you can help do the work of the Gideons by joining us to give out Bibles and speak in churches similar to what I'm doing here today. The third way you can help is through the Memorial Bible Plan. It's called a Gideon Card Bible Plan now. The rack is here on the front. You can give Bibles in memory of those who are deceased, in honor of those who are still living. Someone going through a tough time, you can send a card thinking of you and let them know you're placing a Bible or two in their honor and thinking about them and praying for them. But you can help in this way. The fourth way is through the offering. Per se, we're not taking an offering. If you choose to put anything in offering plates for the Gideons, we'll give you the assurance that 100% of what you give will go for placing the Word of God. Not one penny comes out for administrative or other needs. Our dues as Gideons pays for the few paid staff there at headquarters in Nashville. But we, we urge you two things here that we do not want any money in the offering that you have designated for this particular church. It goes here. We do not want any money in this offering that you need to sustain your own family. It goes for that purpose. But if the Lord has blessed you above and beyond these two means, and you'd like to give any portion of it, small or great, we'll give you the assurance that 100% of it will go for placing God's Word. We do not ask churches to give without us as Gideons being willing to give as well. Presently, of the monies that come in for placing Bibles here locally and around the world, 32% comes through the offering similar to this today. 21% comes through the Memorial Bible Plan we talked about. And 47% comes through the faith fund which the Gideons and Auxiliary themselves give to for placing the Word of God. So we always try to do our part first, but we do deeply appreciate the privilege we've had to be here at Riverside to share with you and give you a Gideon update. May God bless each of you as you continue to carry on His work in this corner of Murray County. Don, we will turn the service back to you. You're, you're there behind me. <laughs> Thank you. Our closing hymn this morning is uh, Help Us Accept Each Other, 560 in your hymn rule. It's in the first and fourth verses. So please stand if you're able.
brothers, we are not dismissed. We're not just free to go. Christ sends us. Go home. Make welcome the stranger in your midst. Go work. Create spaces of justice and mercy. Go learn. Sharpen the talents that God has given you. Go play. Rejoice in the wonder of God's creation. Go in the power of the Spirit to love and serve the Lord. Go to help and heal in all that you do. Christ sends us. Thanks be to God.